broke off a wedding days hours before? What happened? Story 1. So, my wife's cousin, let's call him Tom, had been engaged for about a year to this girl he'd been dating for a while. They seemed solid, you know? They had this grand plan to get married in Alaska. A destination wedding, no less. Everyone in the family was buzzing about it for months, looking forward to this big adventure up north. I mean, it's not every day you get to go to Alaska, right? Anyway, the big day was getting close, just a few days out. Family from all over the U.S. were already boarding flights, suitcases packed with winter gear and fancy clothes. Everyone was all set to celebrate. My wife and I were on our way too, talking about how beautiful the whole thing was going to be. Snow-capped mountains, crystal clear skies, the works. But then, as we were about to head to the airport, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Tom's dad, real short and to the point. The wedding's been called off. Please pray for both of them. That was it. No explanation, no details, just those few words. We were all stunned. The whole family chat blew up, people trying to figure out what had happened. Turns out Tom had pulled the plug on the whole thing. Three days before the wedding, he decided he wasn't ready to commit. Just like that, everything came crashing down. We were all shocked. I mean, a whole year of engagement, plans made, flights booked, money spent, and then this. It didn't make sense to anyone. The worst part was the timing. I mean, how do you wait until three days before the wedding to call it off? It's not like cold feet hit you out of the blue, right? If you're having doubts, you've got to feel them building up. But he kept quiet about it until the last possible second, leaving everyone in the lurch. Most of the family decided to go to Alaska anyway. What else were they supposed to do? Flights were non-refundable. Hotels were booked. So it turned into this weird, awkward vacation. People tried to make the best of it, posting pictures of glaciers and sled dogs on social media, pretending they weren't there for what was supposed to be a wedding. But there was this shadow hanging over the whole thing. Every time someone posted a photo, you could tell they were just trying to make the best out of a bad situation. The former fiancé I heard was devastated. She'd already been through the ringer with planning this wedding, dealing with all the stress that comes with it, and then to have it all yanked away at the last minute? I can't even imagine what she must have felt. And Tom? Well, he just kind of disappeared. Went off the grid for a while, probably to avoid the fallout. I guess he needed time to figure out what he really wanted, but man, the way he went about it left a lot of people hurt. Story 2. My mom's friend, let's call her Sarah, had been seeing this guy for a while. He was charming, kind, the type who could light up a room. But he had this one big problem, alcohol. Everyone who knew him knew that he liked to drink, and not just socially. It was the kind of drinking that made you worry about what might happen next, especially when it came to important commitments. Sarah was no fool. She saw the writing on the wall but still cared about him deeply. She could see the good in him, and she believed that maybe, just maybe, he could change. When he proposed, she told him flat out that she'd only marry him on one condition. He had to give up alcohol for good. No more drinks, not a drop. If he could do that, they'd have a future together. He agreed without hesitation, promising her and probably himself that he'd turn over a new leaf. They set a date and the wedding plans started rolling. The day before the wedding, like any groom-to-be, he had a bachelor party. Now, you'd think his friends would have been in on the deal, knowing the situation. But for whatever reason, they weren't. Or maybe they just didn't take it seriously. Either way, the party was stocked with booze, and temptation was everywhere. It was supposed to be his last night of freedom, right? Just one more night to let loose, and somewhere in the haze of it all, he caved. He drank. The next morning, as he stood at the altar waiting for Sarah, it was clear that something was off. He wasn't just nervous. He was swaying slightly, his eyes glassy, trying too hard to stand straight. Sarah noticed it right away. This wasn't the man she'd agreed to marry. This was a man who had already broken the one promise that mattered most. When the priest asked, do you take this man to be your lawful, wedded husband? There was a pause. Everyone in the room felt it. Time seemed to stretch out as Sarah looked at him, really looked at him, and then she said it. No, I don't. The room went dead silent. You could hear the collective intake of breath, the whispers starting to ripple through the guests. The priest, caught off guard, didn't know what to do. After what felt like an eternity but was probably just seconds, Sarah and her almost husband, along with the priest, stepped out of the church and into a back room. The guests were left to sit there in stunned silence, exchanging puzzled glances, wondering what was going on behind those closed doors. After a while, the priest emerged, his face somber. He walked up to the front and addressed everyone, telling them that the wedding was off and that they should all head home. There was no explanation, no details given, just a simple instruction to leave. The guests shuffled out, murmuring amongst themselves, trying to piece together what had just happened. As for Sarah and the groom, they didn't return to the church that day. The counseling session with the priest must have been intense, and who knows what was said behind those doors. Maybe it was the realization that he couldn't keep his promise. Or maybe it was Sarah's heart breaking right then and there, knowing that this wasn't the man she could build a life with.
Whatever it was, the decision was made, and that was that. Story 3. One of my co-workers, let's call her Jen, went through something that still makes my stomach churn just thinking about it. She was engaged to this guy, Mark, and they'd been together for a solid eight years. You know the type? They were practically inseparable. Jen had two kids from a previous relationship. And over time, Mark had stepped up in a big way, becoming a father figure to them. The kids had even started calling him dad, which, as anyone can imagine, is a huge deal. They were a family, or at least it looked that way from the outside. So they'd been planning their wedding for months. Everything was set for the upcoming weekend. The venue was booked, invitations sent out, and Jen was buzzing with excitement, talking about final details during lunch breaks at work. You could tell she was over the moon, ready to make it official, to bring everyone together to celebrate this life they'd built. Then, that Monday before the wedding, Jen comes home from work like any other day. She's probably thinking about what's left to do before the big day, maybe even a bit stressed with all the last-minute stuff. But when she walks in the door, she realizes something's off. The house is too quiet, too empty. She calls out for Mark, thinking maybe he's just stepped out, but there's no answer. She starts looking around, and that's when it hits her. His stuff is gone. Every trace of him just vanished. His clothes, his shoes, even his toothbrush. It's like he was never there. Jen's in shock, standing in the middle of the living room trying to process what she's seeing. At first, she's probably thinking this has to be a mistake, maybe a prank, or some weird misunderstanding. But as she moves from room to room, reality starts to set in. Mark's gone. No note, no text, no call. Just gone, leaving behind an empty space where their life together used to be. The kids come home, and Jen has to explain to them that Mark isn't there, that she doesn't know where he is, and the wedding they've all been gearing up for isn't happening. I can't imagine the pain of that conversation, especially when the kids had started seeing him as their dad. They must have been confused, hurt, wondering why the man they called dad had just disappeared without a word. It's the kind of thing that scars a kid, leaves them questioning if they did something wrong, even though none of this was their fault. Jen called around, tried to reach him any way she could, but it was like he'd just dropped off the face of the earth. No one knew where he was, and he didn't respond to any messages. She even checked with his family, but they either didn't know or weren't saying. It was like he just wiped his hands of everything and walked away. No explanation, no closure, nothing. The days turned into weeks and still nothing from Mark. People who had been invited to the wedding started finding out through the grapevine, and the whole thing became this cloud hanging over her. She had to cancel everything, explain to friends and family that there wasn't going to be a wedding after all. And the worst part? She still didn't have any answers. It was just this gaping wound left open by the one person she thought she could trust. A year and a half later and she still hasn't heard a peep from him. Not a single word. He just vanished from her life as if the past eight years meant nothing. You can't just erase that kind of time, those memories, those connections. But he somehow managed to. It's hard to wrap your head around how someone could do that. Just up and leave without a trace. Especially when kids are involved. Jen's been trying to pick up the pieces, but it's been rough. You can see it in her sometimes, this weight she carries like she's still trying to figure out what went wrong. There are days when she's okay, when she can laugh and seem like her old self, but then there are those other days, the quiet ones, when you can tell it's still eating at her. The not knowing, the unanswered questions, the sense of betrayal, it all lingers. It's one of those situations where you wish you could offer some words of comfort, but what do you say? There's no easy way to move on from something like that. It's not just a breakup. It's a whole life that was ripped away without warning. She's tough, though. She's got her kids and she's doing her best to keep things together for them. But every so often you see that look in her eyes, that distant stare, and you know she's still haunted by the ghost of what could have been. Story 4. Lisa had been with her fiancé Jake for a good few years. They seemed like the perfect couple, the kind that everyone assumes will go the distance. They had already taken that big step of buying a home together, moving in and starting to build a life. Everything was falling into place, and the wedding was just the next logical step, or at least that's what everyone thought. The wedding was planned for just a few weeks away. Invitations had gone out, the venue was booked, the dress was bought, and all the little details that make a wedding special were coming together. Lisa was excited, nervous in that good way, the way you are when you know something big is about to happen, something you've been looking forward to for so long. Then, about two and a half weeks before the wedding, Jake went in to try on his tuxedo. It should have been a routine thing. Get the fit just right, make sure everything looks sharp, and maybe snap a few photos to send to Lisa to show her how great he looked. But instead, something happened when he was standing in front of that mirror. Maybe it was the sight of himself in the tux, the reality of what it symbolized, or just the weight of everything finally crashing down on him. Whatever it was in that moment, Jake decided it was too much. 
The idea of getting married, of being tied down in this way, suddenly overwhelmed him. Jake called it off right then and there. He didn't wait, didn't go home to talk it over with Lisa or even sleep on it. He just made the decision, called her up, and told her he couldn't go through with it. The wedding was off. Just like that, all the planning, all the dreams they had shared, it all came crashing down. Lisa was devastated, to say the least. Imagine getting a call like that, out of the blue, from the person you're about to marry. They'd already built a life together, bought a house, started planning for the future. She probably thought they were past any doubts or cold feet, especially this close to the wedding. But there she was, blindsided, trying to make sense of how everything could change in an instant. The fallout was, as you can imagine, pretty ugly. Families were involved, trying to figure out what to do next. There were all these moving parts, cancellations to be made, people to notify, and deposits that were lost. Friends and family were shocked, some of them angry at Jake for bailing so late in the game, while others were just sad for Lisa, knowing how much this must have hurt her. And then there was the house. They had this place that was supposed to be the start of their married life, a place they had probably decorated together, filled with memories of their time together. Now, it was just a reminder of what wasn't going to be. I can't imagine how hard it must have been for Lisa to walk through those doors after everything fell apart, to see the home they had built together and know it was all over. Jake, for his part, didn't really have much to say after he called it off. He just sort of withdrew, dealing with his own guilt or confusion or whatever it was that made him realize he couldn't go through with the wedding. There wasn't much closure for Lisa, just a lot of questions and a deep sense of loss. She had to navigate all of this on her own, trying to pick up the pieces of her life and figure out what to do next. Story 5. This one's about me, and it's a story I'll never forget, even though it's all in the past now. A few years back, I was engaged to a guy who... Well, let's just say he had a serious problem with alcohol. I knew it when we first got together. But like a lot of people in love, I kept telling myself that he'd change. I believed in him. Or maybe I just wanted to believe that love was enough to make everything better. We had this whirlwind romance, and before long, we were planning a wedding. I was hopeful, maybe even a bit naive. But deep down, I wanted to think that the commitment of marriage would be the push he needed to turn his life around. As the wedding date got closer, though, I started seeing the reality of the situation. His drinking wasn't getting better, it was getting worse. There were nights when he'd promised me he was done with alcohol, that he was committed to our future, to being the man I needed him to be. And for a while, I'd believe him. I wanted to believe him so badly. But then, without fail, he'd slip back into his old habits. It was like watching the same tragic movie over and over, hoping for a different ending, but knowing deep down how it was going to play out. The night I finally called it off was one of the hardest and clearest moments of my life. He had just made one of those promises again, swearing up and down that he'd never touch another drop of alcohol. He looked me in the eyes and said he was ready to change, that our love was more important to him than anything else. For a fleeting moment, I thought maybe this time would be different. But not even 20 minutes later, I could hear it in his voice. The slurring, the telltale signs that he had been drinking. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I realized right then that this was never going to change, no matter how much I loved him or how much I wanted it to. He was choosing alcohol over everything, including me, and that wasn't something I could live with. So I told him the wedding was off. I laid it all out. Either he goes to rehab and gets help, or we're through. He didn't even hesitate. He chose the alcohol. I remember feeling this mix of heartbreak and relief. It hurt like hell to walk away from someone I love, but at the same time, there was this clarity, this realization that I couldn't save him, and I couldn't keep sacrificing my own happiness for someone who wasn't willing to do the same for me. I packed up my things and left that night and I didn't look back. It wasn't easy, not by a long shot. There were moments of doubt, times when I wondered if I'd made the right choice, if maybe I should have stuck it out a little longer. But deep down, I knew I had done the right thing, not just for me, but for both of us. He needed to face his demons on his own. Without me, they're trying to fix things that were beyond my control. Fast forward to now, and life looks a whole lot different. I ended up meeting someone else, a guy who's everything I never knew I needed. He's kind, patient, and most importantly, he doesn't drink. It's not just that he doesn't have a problem with alcohol. He doesn't even touch the stuff. Being with him is like a breath of fresh air, a reminder that relationships don't have to be about fixing someone or waiting for them to change. They can just be about two people loving each other, plain and simple. We're getting married in May, and this time there's no hesitation, no second guessing. I'm excited, genuinely happy, in a way I didn't know was possible back when I was stuck in that cycle with my ex story six. I called off my wedding a month before it was supposed to happen, and looking back, it was probably the best decision I've ever made. The whole thing was a long time coming, if I'm being honest. My ex and I had been engaged for a little over a year, but even during that time, it wasn't smooth sailing. In fact, I broke up with her twice during our engagement because of all the fighting. It was constant, 
Just this never-ending cycle of arguments, drama, and emotional exhaustion. Each time I tried to end things, she would break down, begging me to give her another chance, promising she'd change. And you know, I wanted to believe her. I really did. There's something about seeing someone you care about in that kind of pain that makes you doubt your own instincts. So, I'd give in, thinking maybe this time would be different. Maybe she really would change. For a few weeks after each breakup, things would seem better. She'd be calmer, more understanding, and I'd start to think that maybe we could actually make it work. But then, like clockwork, the old patterns would creep back in. The drama would return, the same fights would start up again, and I'd find myself right back where I started, wondering if this was really the life I wanted. The closer we got to the wedding, the more I started to realize that this wasn't just a rough patch. This was how our life together was going to be. The constant ups and downs, the emotional roller coaster. It wasn't going to magically stop just because we said our vows. I knew that if I went through with it, I'd be signing up for a lifetime of the same issues, the same fights, and the same unhappiness. And that wasn't something I could live with. With a month to go, it all became too clear. I remember sitting alone one night, just thinking about the future, and the thought of living that way forever made my stomach turn. I didn't want to be stuck in a marriage where I was always waiting for the other shoe to drop, always bracing myself for the next fight. So I made the call. I told her it was over for good this time and that the wedding was off. She didn't take it well, to put it mildly. There were more tears, more pleading, but I knew I had to stick to my decision. It wasn't easy. Canceling a wedding that close to the date is a logistical nightmare. I lost a lot of money in deposits, venues, catering, the whole nine yards. But honestly, none of that compared to the relief I felt once it was done. It was like this huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I knew in my gut that I'd made the right choice, and that was worth more than any amount of money. It's been seven years since then, and I haven't spoken to her since. I've heard through the grapevine that she's still single, and sometimes I wonder if she ever really did change. But that's not my concern anymore. I walked away from a situation that wasn't healthy for either of us, and I've never looked back.